welcome back to the program. You're watching Morning Thailand with Phi and Golf. Now, of course, Kun Phi, you have asked me a little bit earlier there about mm -hmm. the Facebook thing. Apparently, um, the, the person, the killer, he posted on his Facebook saying that he is in need of the money because oh, he just, you so know. So he got the offer. Yes, so, that's, so this woman offer. just going that, okay, if you need money, I have a way for you to make money mm -hmm. kind of thing. Use so. it in the jail. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we've got some more investigations going on. It seems that uh, at this point, the DSI has got a lot of cases on hand, apart from the scandalous monk. And this time, there's a another one. Not not a monk, but <laughs> the credit union. Okay. Now the DSI has joined hand with the AMLO, the anti money la money laundering office, mm -hmm. to investigate the charges of multi billion baht fraud by the executives of Klongchan Credit Union Cooperative after they got a lot of complaints by the clients saying that they could not withdraw their monies and also they could not close their account there. Mm -hmm. More than 100 members of the cooperatives had filed petitions with police alleging that Kun Supachai C. Supaksan, he is the chairman of the cooperatives, he was uh, accused of embezzling mm -hmm. more than 12 billion baht from right. the cooperatives fund. So the AMLO and also the DSI had investigated and firstly they had frozen their assets including 300 plots of land uh, in Kanchanaburi, Ayutthaya and Nakhon Ratchasima provinces and the several plots are worth more than 90 million apiece. Mm -hmm. So the total value of the lands are around 1 billion baht and also he got 9 bank accounts and 10 vehicles and they would conduct more investigation afterwards. So the officials from the Cooperative Auditing Department also joining with two agencies in examining the Klongjan financial documents, initial findings show that many withdrawals, there were many withdrawals involving hundreds of millions of baht at a time mm -hmm. without the authorized signatures while the regulation stated that when you got to withdraw that much money at a time, there must be signed by two, at least two authorized executives. Oh. One, is, one is Kun Supachai, however, right. there's only one signature ah. in order to withdraw the money. Mm. So a lot of clients there saying that after they realized there were some fishy things going on, yeah. they want to withdraw their money and close their account, but they could not do that. Because the money is not there for them mm -hmm. to close anymore. So that after this, the board members of the Klongjan Credit Union would be called in for more interrogation today. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll hear more about this corruption that happens in Yeah, Thailand. and it's horrible because the thing is, you think that it's the safest place for mm -hmm. you to put the money exactly. in, right? In the bank. Otherwise, what's the point? Just keep it at home. And then you ended up right. knowing that the bank that you so trusted mm -hmm. have already used your money for you without your consent. So that's not good. Now, um, moving on to another interesting news. Now, I have been reporting about this particular, another missing businessman, Kun mm -hmm. and we have talked about whether or not he is still alive. And a lot of people, especially the police, has came out and thinking that he might not be alive anymore mm -hmm. due to the extent of time because it has been over a week already mm -hmm. he still has not turned up there's no ransom notes or anything like that so obviously he wasn't abducted mm -hmm. to to be part of the ransom therefore uh, at this point they are trying to get to the bottom of this and i am talking about kun chai chana mai mm -hmm. and of course he is a big businessman in rong Glua. Uh, market, which mm -hmm. is a second hand or the previously owns uh, market that has been selling all those previously owned goods mm -hmm. in Aran, uh, in Aranya Prathet of Sakyao right. province. Now they say that this in the picture there is a um, fortuner um, van, is white fortuner that has been captured on the CCTV camera showing that it was following or tailing Kun uh, Chai mm -hmm. car at on the morning of his um, missing and the day I guess. that he was gone exactly now of course at this point um, this is in Chonburi province by the way that they found it mm -hmm. the police said that um, they asked people in the area and of course the one that have there you go in a the picture there um, they have asking the people when did they 
first be able to notice or detect this particular car, the neighbors say that they have seen this particular car parked in mm -hmm. this house for a week now. And when they ask the owner who it belongs to, because obviously um, the neighbors probably have seen on the news quite a bit, um, the person said that it belongs to his uncle. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, the police right now have been um, taken all the, um, uh, the fingerprints, evidence. exactly, uh -huh. fingerprints. And the suspicious part was that they say that they look at the, the van and, or the car, uh, SUV here and found that it has been washed twice already mm. in the past week, in, in just this week. And the back seat, two back seats were taken out of the van, in, of the car mm -hmm. to be put in the house. However, one of it was actually outside, just kind of, um, you know, getting dried in the sun. So there has been evidence of some kind of cleaning up going on. Mm -hmm. So the police at this point say that they're not sure yet what's going on, but they also taking in book banks that they have found in the house. Mm -hmm. um, they will not disclose much yet because they don't want to stir any, you know, problems in terms of trying to get the investigation going. So we will definitely hear a little bit more about this, but um, mm -hmm. we're, we still haven't seen either the body or um, Kun Chai Chana himself. So mm -hmm. we're not sure at this point what's going on, but hopefully, hopefully, let's hope for the best that he might right. just be captured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for this case as well, the very famous controversial monk right now, Nen yeah. Kam, Lung Or Lung Every day. Nen Kam. <laughs> We've got daily Nen Kam updates, and this time yesterday, yeah, no the DSI said they were taking over the matter and they had sent officials down to up to Ubon Ratchathani right. province, which is his hometown in the northeastern part of Thailand, and got more information, information than uh, we used firstly, to. Firstly, it seems that Luang Pu Nenkam is super rich that we've yeah. already expected. Mm -hmm. He bought 22 Mercedes-Benz cars, 22? one at a time, in oh. cash. Right, because, you know, I mean, being a monk would just be uh -huh. that wealthy. It seems that uh, they've got a revelation from the car dealer mm -hmm. in Ubon Ratchathani province saying that there was a monk whose name was Prawirapon Sukapon, which is uh, Longpu Nen's real name, mm -hmm. who bought 21 cars, from Mercedes-Benz car under his name and another one under his eighth name. Mm. Yeah, so the eight. price ranging from starting from 5 million to mm -hmm. 11 million per one car and his aide got Mercedes-Benz 300, S300 300 model which is worth 11 million. Okay, DSI would like to see all these cars as right. well, I'm so pretty sure. So DSI had questioned why a monk need more than 20 cars at a time and how come he could buy a car that in cash. Exactly. That's almost almost 100 million. I think AMLO was just wondering the same, the, mm -hmm. the anti-money laundering office. So they suspected that mm -hmm. the monk had laundered a lot of money by such purchases. And sources claim that, that this is very suspicious because all those cars would have to be registered, right? When you right. buy a new car, a brand new car, you will get a red license plate. Mm -hmm. However, you've got to register in order to get the normal white plate. However, this monk, the Nen Kam monk, did not register all those 22 cars. He sold them back to the dealer and bought, bought new one. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. I, I think he would like to use like brand new cars all the time, the red plate cars to make him because you have to extend Buddha's teaching by using those expensive, luxurious cars. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And um, the picture earlier, Kunfai, that we've mm -hmm. seen, you know, with the bags of goods that mm -hmm. the police have shown, those are, I think, jewelries, uh, rubies, right. like gems, gems, we call Found them. Found in mm -hmm. his... Uh, house? His safe house? Not, not his own safe house, the, his cousin's. His cousins. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are gems. These are like rubies and jades and such, uh -huh. which worth around ten million. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes this somehow doesn't pan up mm -hmm. how you can actually you know make this much money mm -hmm. being a monk. And earlier, if you remember, there's a picture of a man who looked very similar to Nen Kam sleeping with another person as right. well. 
that was possibly a woman, in really. women. Right. However, the DSI has already confirmed that the picture is not edited or manipulated, but they cannot rule it out if that uh, that figure nearby is a woman or, or that might man. be a man with a long hair. Okay, well, because, you know, it could have been a man, uh -huh. but obviously, um, I think at this point, hopefully his follower, mm -hmm. if you, you see this and hear this, you yeah. will you know, get a little bit more aware. And, and this, this picture is here is the DSI and the officers uh, from the Central Institute of Forensic Science that mm -hmm. had traveled to Ubon Ratchathani to collect the DNA sample from this woman and an 11-year-old boy whose mother claimed that he was son of Nen Kam. So they oh. got the DNA samples from these two people. However, but they got to... he's not here. He's not check. here. So the DSI would have to collect the DNA sample from his parents instead. Ah. However, it seems that they are not cooperating well at this time. Yeah. They knocked on their door yesterday, but no one opened it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, well, their door is quite big. Maybe it's too thick. No one could hear it. Right. Right. If they got the samples from their parents, from uh, Nenkam's parents, mm -hmm. the result should be known within 24 hours and it's 99% accurate. So right. But it seems but if, not if, that easy. If the parents don't didn't give uh, would mm -hmm. not give in, um, we would not know anyway. They might seek the court order to make things oh, a good. little bit easier. And one more thing I've got news here that mm -hmm. Nenkam is no longer in France since oh. June the twenty second because his visa for France had already expired on June the twentieth. That's so, so unfortunate. he already flew to California. Oh, how nice! Right, right. They got a monastery <laughs> that might be branches of uh, Kantitam Monastery in Thailand here this in is California. Like a big company going right. on here. It's just sad. Like you don't so they make got, it. He got friends mm -hmm. and accommodation there in the United States. Uh, he was spotted with another three months. I don't know if they were out shopping or something. Right, because there was uh, previously reported about the monks that went mm -hmm. to uni Universal mm -hmm. Studio and enjoy their dinner, steak, steak dinner. Exactly. So, well, moving on to another scandal that has been ongoing is the rice. Mm -hmm. And of course, the rice pledging scheme. We will talk about that um, in the next break. However, for this break, apparently there has been in a social network circling around name calling some of the rice company mm -hmm. that has been uh, producing rice uh, just within the country as well as exporting mm -hmm. it to outside, especially the Royal Umbrella Rice or Khao Tra Chat, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, another company as well that has been um, in the trouble or has been mentioning. Um, I will find that. I, have, I cannot find it just yet. But Kun Suthiphong Thamawut, he is the TV personnel, um, the host of Kun 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 show. Now he posted on a Facebook Sadly, that mm -hmm. there, you know, this particular um, sent uh, information about the whole um, saying that there were big mills in Surin province as well as in um, Yasodhan province that has been um, using too much chemical in their rice in order to prevent to keep the rice a little bit fresher, even though it's the old mm -hmm. ones. And there is, uh, these two have sent. Um, the money to Khao Ben Jarong, there you go. That's another mm -hmm. brand that he has dropped uh, the names there. Khao Ben Jarong and Khao Tra Chat or the Royal Umbrella. So these two, at this point, Khao, uh, the Royal Umbrella has come out and said that they are suing him mm -hmm. because obviously this is a false allegation and they have just received, they say, um, or they will receive tomorrow uh, award from the FCA the Royal mm -hmm. Umbrella, and this is belongs to CP company, which is like a big very company. Big. So they are taking this very seriously. Now, Kun Suti Pong said that, um, well, he just saw it on Facebook and mm -hmm. it was circling around. So he thought that he shared it. Mm, right. But this is the thing you have to be careful. If, if, if you cannot find the legit source of where it comes from, the information, and do not share it. Uh -huh, if you're a TV producer. Exactly, because you are more exposed to mm -hmm. a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people are taking it seriously. Now, the mills in um, Surin province, the Si Sap Anan, as, uh, excuse me, Sap Anan mill, as well as in Yasothan province, um, Sap Siriton mill, these two were actually being mentioned in the post as well. Now, these two are not very happy. They say that um, 
this is not something that they want to get involved with. Plus, they have never sell rice to the Royal Umbrella brand or Benjerong brand mm -hmm. before. So these allocations is false. So please, before you get any information, try to get to the bottom of it before you believe it. Mm -hmm. Plus, the reporter um, suspect that they might have something. Well, they raised this particular issue saying that because Kun Suthi Pong, he has a company and he also produced the rice called Kao Kunatam. Oh. He launched Kunatam brand. He has his own brand. So the reporter's like, so is so this some kind good. of discrediting other uh -huh. brands so that they would look into your brand? So, right? So that's not good. No, it's not good. So it looks like Kun Suthi Pong will have a lot to answer. And, mm -hmm. you know, at this point, we will give you a, a little bit more information as to which direction is this going to go to. Now, we're going to take a short break. We have the audio clip saga right. coming out and plus more on the rice pledging scheme. So please stay tuned.